Hey guys and welcome back to Eat the World. I'm Chef Alex Lazic. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about my motorhome and my solar power system that I wanted but didn't really know how to go about doing apart from just buying a solar panel. And so I did a whole pile of research and I realized that it's a fairly it can be fairly complicated and fairly daunting if you're starting from total scratch. So I think a lot of the stuff I've seen on YouTube has a lot to do with the design, a lot to do with the technical. If you've got absolutely no power um, for your RV or your motorhome, etc., etc., I'm in a 2006 32W Fleetwood Bounder, and I already happen to have obviously a hookup like everybody does um, but I've also got a generator and I think just adding a solar panel is something I decided I wanted to do for those times that I'm not connected to power and to be honest with you that's not really often last summer I was pretty much um, not hooked up to anything and what it meant was every day I probably I needed to run that generator for about two to three hours a day now there's other things I could have done to help do that I haven't changed my lights to LED, which is pretty basic. You should be changing your lights to LED instead of the old style ones, which I've still got. So I'd have to run my generator for about two to three hours a day just to top up my batteries so I could run my fridge. Um, what I realize as well, and I didn't, nobody tells you this, is that, that if you want to get your generator started, you need your house batteries to be charged, which is counterintuitive almost. Like, oh, my battery's dead, so I'm going to turn the generator on but you can't do that, as I discovered, if your battery's dead. You've got to get a boost from somewhere and then boost your house batteries to get your generator started. So these are all things that I've learned along the way. So I decided I wanted to have a solar panel. Now, like I said, I've done all kinds of research and I found it horrifically confusing and nobody really answers the question in the, all the videos that I've watched is, well, what if I've already got house batteries the videos I've seen is like, oh, these are the batteries you need to get. It's like, I've already got house batteries, so I don't really know why I need to get more batteries. Nobody really addresses the, the, the options when you've already got like a system and you just want to be able to charge the batteries. Because apparently it's actually pretty easy to do. When I say it's easy to do, it's easy to install and it all depends on how much power you use. So everybody's case is going to be different. For me, like I said, all I really needed to do was just keep my batteries topped up on a daily basis. I don't use a lot of electricity just to run my fridge, a few lights, and that's about it. I mean, charge my phone up, occasionally plug in my laptop, that kind of thing. So I didn't really need to do a lot. I'm not running air conditioning off of it. I don't need to do that. Um, so it was, uh, it was kind of an interesting sort of prospect. So. What I decided to do, and after doing my research and speaking to a few people is, I was just going to mount my solar panel, because I had one, um, 150 watt, 100, 150 watt solar pot panel, mounted on my roof, and I was gonna run it down to my, the crappy charge control that came with it, because like I said, I don't need this all the time. Um, I'm gonna mount it, and I decided to mount it in the cabinet just by my stairs. Now, I decided to do that because my batteries are just by my stairs. So if I mounted my solar panel on the roof, down to the, ran a line down to the cabinet through the roof, and then whenever I wanted power, all I have to do is like drop some alligator clips down to my stairs, clip them on, and that will provide me with the power. Now, I still haven't actually needed to use the solar panel, so I haven't tested it so much apart from, yeah, it's giving, it's giving a charge and it's charging my batteries whenever I need it. Um, like I said, but I haven't really had to test it yet. So enough of me blabbing. I hope you find this interesting because I, I really struggled with how am I going to make this work because all the information I've seen on the internet is designing your solar power system. What inverter do you need? What charge controller do you need? What solar panels do you need? What kind of batteries you should use? When all I wanted to do was just keep the batteries I had topped up. So I hope you enjoy watching this. Um, anyways, please like and subscribe, and I really appreciate guys watching. Please subscribe. Um, like I said, I've started doing this full time now. I don't have a job anymore, um, so I really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe. Um, it takes a lot of time to put these videos together. So, 
Thank you so much. Watch. So this is my 2006 32W Fleetwood Bounder, which I absolutely love. So I guess the first steps I decided was where was I going to put the charge controller and drill a hole through a roof. And I decided right in this spot here, because that's closest to the cabinet by the stairs. And I wanted my solar panel just behind the air conditioner, because I'm just terrified of it getting ripped off in the wind, even though I've secured it um, well. So, first steps I was doing was going to attach the solar panel to the roof, just behind that air conditioning unit. So I drilled some pilot holes. And then I filled the pilot holes with sealant. Very, very important. You obviously don't want to get any leaks from this. So I went over the top, I think, a little bit and making sure that I'm not going to get any leaks when I attach this. So drilled the pilot holes, filled them full of sealant. And then it's as simple as screwing on the bolts that would uh, attach it to the roof. And that's exactly what I did. So very, very simple. Now, as you can see, I decided to use a tilting mount for my solar panel, a um, 100 watt solar panel. And I wanted to do that just so I could maximize the use of any sunlight that I possibly would have coming in. So to get to make sure that the solar panels are facing in the best direction to maximize that. And next again, because like I said, I'm very paranoid uh, of getting leaks, I went and I put some more sealant um, on top of every bolt um, as well as on in the holes. So just make sure that we go over the top, make sure we don't get any leaks whatsoever. Now the next step was to use this drill bit and to drill a hole. We only want a hole as big enough as we need to get the cable through there. So you see that I've drilled the hole, I've tested it just to make sure that it's wide enough. And then I'm using here what's called a cable gland to attach it to the roof. So this will pr produce a watertight seal for the cables um, that when it goes down through the roof into that cabinet just by my stairs. So. I've, put, I've fed it through, and then I'm going to feed it through the roof down into the cabinet. And what we're going to do is, again, go back to that sealant and fill that hole with as much sealant as we can. I went back with several layers of it. I really just am terrified of leaks because they can do so much damage and can cause you a lot of grief and misery. misery. So, on the back side of the cable gland, we're going to attach it with uh, some putty. And here you'll see I'm using the Dicor Butyl sealing tape or putty. So that just fits onto the bottom. Um, again, one more lot of sealant there, but that just fits onto the bottom of the cable gland. And then we're gonna press it, um, press it in place and make sure that we've got a good tight seal. And that will, should provide us with a watertight seal, but we're not gonna stop there. We're going to use some Eternabond tape as well to go over the edges just to quadruply make sure that we don't get any leaks at all. Again, that's my biggest fear. Um, you'll also notice here that my cable gland has got space for two cables. Now I've just used the end of one of the cables that I didn't need and I put that into the spare spot on the cable gland just in case I ever need to run another cable down through there. I've already got the hole drilled. I can put it through there. Of course it'll be a bit of a nightmare with um, the um, sealant and everything but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it I don't have any plans for it but the option is there and I've got it already set up to go if I do need it so again uh, we'll finish off with that tape and then we are good to go and that's pretty much all there is to do on the roof so very exciting So you see I fed my wires down through the cabinet. This is my charge controller that came with the solar panel. It's not the best apparently, but it'll do the job for what I need it to do. So the cables go into the bottom of it, into the place that it's marked on the, um, on the charge controller. Then I'll tighten those screws in. And, um, and then what we're gonna do is grab the cable for the output that goes to the battery. 
uh, and we'll attach those as well. Those, and I, I think I've mentioned I'm using alligator clips. So that's just a cable running to two alligator clips, which are going to attach to the battery. And the battery compartment is just under my stairs. And that's what the finished product will look like. Now you see here, um, the, there's four screws here that go to my battery compartment. We'll unscrew those and that'll expose the battery. And as so, we've attached the cable clips, the alligator clips. Now I've attached it and it's not working. So there we go. I've got everything hooked up now and I've got everything plugged in. I had a little bit of a mishap. I actually had my wires crossed, so I was getting nothing and I was a bit sort of concerned. But I got a multimeter out and established that I was actually getting power coming from the solar panel. Um, and here we go. You can see I've got, let me get closer to that. Um, you've got, I've got the sunshine symbol. I was showing uh, a moon symbol there, which was representing nighttime, which means that no, no charge was coming in. And that's why I knew something was awry. Um, but now I've got the sunshine symbol. I've got that moving solar panel power moving towards the battery, which is what I wanted. Um, and shows us that we've got some power coming in. And um, what I'm going to do now is mount this back up into the cabinet um, right there. And when I want solar, this is what I'm going to do. When I, want, when I want my battery, this is what I'm going to do. I've got from there, eventually, I'm not going to show all this, but down to my batteries, which is just under my stairs. I don't know if you can see. Let me get another light on here. There's my batteries there. And I've got little alligator clips that will clip on. Just one there and one there. And that'll provide me with some battery charge. So I'll see how this goes. I don't know if it's going to be sufficient for what I need. Um, but I'm not off grid very often. So basically, all I'm going to have to do is go up to my cabinet, grab the alligator clip leads which will just run down the side near my door so it won't be very intrusive or ugly and then I'll just sneak them in under my stairs um, and close that back up and then I'll have a charge going to my battery so that's my solar plan and I'm really happy that was a super easy install um, we'll see how useful it is